Hi everyone, my name is Robin Lewis and in this video I'm going to be making a cupboard or closet with sliding doors to fill this nook. I started by cutting through some of this trim for a ledger, both a horizontal and vertical. This ledger is going to be taking a lot of weight, I want to be able to put stuff on top of the closet so it went in with a lot of screws. I then cut some 70 by 35 millimeter timber to fit. You'll notice this has a red tint to it. This is a particular type of treatment that we have here up in the north of Australia where the termites are pretty bad. With all of that plumb and level, I could start work on the actual stud wall. You'll notice I'm using screws to put this together. That's only because I don't have a nail gun. And you'll also notice I've got some noggins right at the 1.8 meter high level. This is where the trim is gonna to go to cover the cement sheeting, which I'm gonna get onto later. Because of the way I've built this, doing the frame and then bringing it on site essentially, it means that I haven't accounted for all the, the, lip, the, the grade changes in the floor. Generally, when, if you were gonna build something like this, like a wall, you put the bottom plate down and then measure each one of these studs to fit. So to get around the problem, I'm gonna be using these shims. These are window spaces, one and a half mil, and I can stack a couple up, slide those in, and then that will take the load and then screw through that. For the header, I used a piece of 140 by 35 millimeter pine, and this is probably a bit overkill for this, but I had this leftover from a bed build that I did not too long ago for a client. I'll link to that in the description. Here I'm testing to see if there's any deflection in the header and there's pretty much nothing as you can see. And then I went on to add another 70 by 35 to the back of that, although this is where I ran into a problem. So a bit of a hiccup. I'm gonna to have to make the side panels wider and the header wider. When I'd originally done all my designs, the doors were gonna be a lot thinner than they are. The ones that I've chosen are a bit wider. So this whole section needs to come out. The header needs to come out because the jam is gonna be a lot wider. Going back to the idea of weight, I wanted the ceiling of this closet to be able to take a lot of it. That's why I'm using this type of construction. I went back later and added some hangers to all of these cross pieces. I went with fiber cement sheets simply because I've used this in the past and I feel more confident with it over something like chip rock or plasterboard. This is where those noggins that were put into the wall come into play and you'll notice the majority of the nailing is on the outside of the sheet so it can be covered with trim later on. It wasn't too long ago that I would have been making these sorts of cuts with an angle grinder and a diamond disc but now that we're starting to understand silicosis a lot more and it's becoming an understood threat these hand tools for cutting are the answer. They're also a lot less noisy, they create less dust so overall I actually prefer working with them now. You'll notice I'm covering the majority of the wall in this fiber cement sheet and most of this is just gonna be covered with timber trim later on, but it's about bringing all the surfaces up to the same level. You'll notice when I'm installing the pelmet to the top trim, I'm only using these 90 degree brackets and I'm not screwing through the trim into the pelmet. The reason I did that is so if I ever need to change this pelmet at a later stage or if I've made a mistake at this point, I can simply pull it off and put a new one on. When you're installing this track onto the trim, the main thing you've got to consider is that there's enough space between the front door and the pelmet. The other door is going to have plenty of space behind it, but that front door is the one that you want as close and tight as possible. I'm screwing the track through the trim and into the stud, that way I know that's going to have a very solid grip. I was using 50 millimeter screws, so they were quite long. For the trim work, I pulled out my brad nailer, and I've got to say, if you're going to be doing a project like this, it's definitely worth getting a nail gun like this. Trying to do this by hand would have taken a lot longer, 
So it's definitely worth that investment. For the top of the closet, I'm gonna be using a piece of melamine particle board. This is quite cheap here in Australia, and it's also got a very hard wearing surface. So any trunks or boxes going on top can be slid around and is not gonna damage it. I try to match the trim as closely as possible to the existing house, and I, I think I got it pretty much there. And then there was one place where the wall was a bit wonky, so I had to scribe a line and use a hand plane to get it to fit snugly. These are the wheels that come with the track set. They're nylon wheels, there's two of them, one on either side of the door. This is a relatively inexpensive 35 millimeter door from my local home center. I cut out a small hole using a hole saw and chisels to take this door handle. This matches the rest of the door handles in the house. Here I'm cutting a groove through the bottom of the door. This is gonna sit over a guide which will be attached to the floor. I finished painting the doors. You can see I've got this one already installed. So I did a bit of a trial run and, and figured it out with it. There's a couple of adjustments that you can make with these this track system to line up the doors. The first are these wheels and how they're screwed into the top of the door. This adjustment will determine where the door is in terms of the track. So you obviously want it to be as close to the pelmet as possible without being too close. And then you want to have enough space uh, for the second door to fit. The other adjustment is that these wheels can be moved up and down. And that will determine how close this gap is, how consistent this is all the way from the top to the bottom. So you really want to make sure that this, this frame this, and, this, and this jam is straight and then you can use those wheels to essentially shift the door left and right and get a consistent line all the way up and down. In my experience, and it might not be like this for everyone, there was a lot of adjusting that went on here. I didn't film all of it because there was quite a bit, but there was a lot of taking it off, making adjustments, putting it on, checking it's not quite right and repeating. And because all of the trim is not perfectly plumb and level, you may need to make adjustments so that the overall look is on point. Now this is that gap that I was talking about. You can see how it tapers down. So this entire door needs to be shifted in that direction. There's a few ways of hanging these doors, but in the end, the easiest that I found was simply to loosen off the screws and that way you could get that second door in a little bit easier. Just checking the fit of the door handle because this looks pretty close. Basically you've got to make sure that there's enough of a gap between the door, two doors for this edge or this flange of the door to fit through, which there's enough. It's actually, wow. Straight off the bat, I think I've got it pretty close. Yeah. This is the guide that comes with the kit and they call for a six millimeter gap cut into the bottom of the door. But when I put the, when I fitted this, there's such a big gap between the guard and the door. So I don't know if I got that wrong or, or what happened, but basically that guard is, that's gonna be no good because the door is just gonna be bouncing around on top of that guard. So I saw a video by the Samurai Carpenter where he made his own guides. So I gave that a go and I'm actually quite happy I did because this guide is going to disappear into my orange pine floors a lot better than this very white plastic one. And I've been able to make some minor adjustments to it, make it a bit wider so it's easier to get the screws in. And this has a much tighter fit. The main goal with this guide is not for the door to be plumb. I mean, you want it as close as possible to that. But what you really want is in the closed position for this gap to be consistent from the bottom of the door all the way to the top. So I'll take a measurement at the top of the door with my combination square.
And now again, the spacing between the doors, you're not so worried about them being plumb, you just want that space to be consistent all the way from the top to the bottom. So I'm using these 1.5 millimeter window spacers, couple of them together, and that gave me the correct distance apart. So obviously at this stage, there is a cavity here ready for shelves or something, which is what I'll be doing in the next video. What I've also done recently is replaced this door as part of this hallway renovation. So the next video that's gonna, co gonna come out is gonna be this one. It'll be replacing the jam and putting on a new door. And in the meantime, I'll start working on what's gonna go on on the inside of this closet. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. My name is Robin Lewis, take care, and I'll see you in the next video.